this uh, pastor came to see me. He had heard me speak on inner healing, and he said that he had a woman that he was visiting in a mental health hospital, and she had almost grown up in the institution uh, because she didn't have family anymore. And she was not raised in a Christian family. She didn't know the Bible. Uh, she didn't know Jesus. But she, he found that when he went, he just sat quietly with her and would pray for her. Uh, she seemed to spark. She was like, like some of the backward patients I used to work with. You know, they just they they don't even connect anymore. You know, and that's the way she was. And as he would just sit quietly and pray with her, so a spark came back. And so after he heard me speak, he came to me and he asked if uh, he could bring her. I'll call her Mary. I think that's the name I use all the time. Just Blessed Mother. I can remember that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. He, told, he asked if uh, he could bring her, and I said, well, the reason I, I teach is so you'll do this. You know, we're here so you will go and do this. Uh, I can't see everyone that needs help, and CHM can't. That's why this church and every one of you from different churches is so important that you're here and learning this. So anyway, he made an appointment and brought her anyway because he didn't want to pray with her. He didn't know how to, and I said, okay. And I saw her three or four times. And she was a lovely woman. She was probably about 40 years old. She'd been institutionalized her whole life since she was a teenager, young girl. And uh, I prayed with her. The last time she came, I, I, I had no idea what was wrong with her other than she'd been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenic, beyond depression. Uh, she was delusional. She had hallucinations. She heard voices. Very sweet woman, though. And the last time she came, I said, I really feel like the Holy Spirit wants to just be quiet. We're going to be quiet, and we're going to see what he does today. And I said, is that okay? And she agreed, so I held her hands. And I said, we're just going to pray and ask Jesus, what's the root of this problem? Because she was repressed under the age of about 10. She had no memories of her childhood. Now, that doesn't always indicate trauma, but it usually does. You know, because the, the brain will just take care of us. So anyway, we were just sitting there quietly. And after about a half an hour, I was just praying in tongues quietly. After about a half an hour, she said, I'm having a memory. And see, that's why I love that scripture in Hebrews. It says that the Holy Spirit searches out the deeper parts of us. You know, we don't need hypnosis. We don't need all analysis and all that. The Holy Spirit releases what we need to remember. We don't have to go digging. And so anyway, the memory that came back was she was a little girl. She was about three or four years old. They lived in another country. Her father was an engineer. He was in this other small country, building bridges and doing all that. And she lived there with her mother and father. And her mother, I think, was also schizophrenic. And one of the tragic things about schizophrenia, or any form of it is, is uh, they can't be relational. They can't bond with people. And if you add paranoia to it, then they're fearful of people. So I think her mother was that way because the father was one of these people that was just a great dad. He was just a great dad. But he was gone most of the day. And the mother uh, would abuse her during the day, uh, verbally, emotionally, physically, not sexually, and would lock her in a closet, things like that, for the whole day. And so she never told her father about all this. So anyway, one day when she was a little girl, her father had a very serious heart attack. And they rushed him to this teeny little clinic that was on this, uh, in this country. And the mother made her sit outside and wait. And what I always remember about that, she was sitting in the chair across from me in my office as I was, I was holding one of her hands. She suddenly looked like a little girl. And uh, it, it was almost like the chair either got bigger or she got smaller. And I was looking at her. And what she remembered, her mother had her sit out there. And after a while, her mother came out and said, we're going home now. And grabbed Mary and pulled her off the chair. Started dragging her down the hallway. And she said, I want to see Daddy. Now, I want you to follow this because this was all the Holy Spirit. Okay wasn't me doing anything. And her mother picked her up and shook her. 
and said, you'll never see him again, he's dead. And if I see you cry, I'll beat you. And she took this little girl home and she took everything that belonged to the father out of the house, burned it, threw it away. And Mary never again said the name of her father or asked for him. And then she ends up in a mental institution. So that's the memory she told me. And she said, do you think that's important? <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. So I said, let's pray. And I took both of her hands and I asked Jesus. I was just getting ready to, to say, let's go to that memory. And the, and the Holy Spirit said, I'm doing this. Don't do it. I'm doing this. And she just sat there and I just sat and prayed. And this is what he did. It's so beautiful. Jesus walked into that room where she was sitting in that little chair, that big chair, because she was little, and he just walked up to her and he said, hello. And she said, hi, and he said, what are you doing? Now, follow Jesus in this. She said, I'm waiting to see my daddy, but they won't let me. And he picked her up in his arms, and he said, they'll let me. And he walked into the room where her father was lying in bed with his eyes closed. And she looked up at Jesus, held in his arms, and said, is he dead? Because that was always the horrible question in her mind. Where did he go? And Jesus laughed. Would you follow Jesus? He laughed and said, he's not dead. He's asleep. Do you want me to wake him up? And he reached over and he touched her father's head and he opened his eyes. And then Jesus placed Mary in the arms of her father. And they had this wonderful reunion. It was just a wonderful reunion. Lots of tears, lots of joy. And then after a while, Jesus said to Mary, now this is what really got me, he said, Mary, I have a daddy too. And I was wondering, would it be all right with you if your daddy goes to live with my daddy? And she said she looked at Jesus for a long time, especially his eyes and his smile. Those were the two things she remembered always. And she said, what's he like? You can see a little girl say that. What's he like? And Jesus laughed again and said, he's just like me. Isn't that beautiful? He's just like me. And then she said, where does he live? And Jesus said, it's not far from here. Is it all right with you if your daddy goes to live with my daddy? And she said she looked at Jesus very intensely and said, can I go too? And Jesus grew serious then, and he said, no. He said, but there will come a time when I'll come back and get you, when it's your time. But I want you to know your daddy's going to be with me and my daddy. Is it all right with you? He asked her a second time. And she said, looking in those eyes and looking at that smile, she couldn't say no. So she said, it's all right. All right. And then Jesus said, and I think this is the, the closure, the healing. He said, I want you to say goodbye to your daddy now. Because she never got to say goodbye. Never knew where he went. So this time she put her arms around his neck and kissed him. And said, bye-bye, daddy. I'll see you later. And then Jesus picked her back up and took her out of the room. Isn't that extraordinary? It's one of the most beautiful inner healings. I got a call from her. It was about two or three weeks later. She had been released from the hospital. She said it took them a while to notice I was different. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? She said the nurse noticed it, then the, then the counselor noticed it, and then the psychologist tested me. They said, what happened to you? She said, I met Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? 